Welcome to AI Business TV here at the AI Summit New York 2019. We're very pleased to be joined today by Paul Barber. He's a Chief Scientist at Lexalytics. How are you? I'm really good. Thanks for having me. Well, yeah, welcome to AI Summit <laughs> New you. York. Yeah, I'm very excited. How are you enjoying your time here so far? Really good. Some interesting talks, a lot of cool stuff going on. It's been uh, really interesting. Great. So yeah. you've actually been shortlisted as one of our prestigious nominees for AI Innovator of the Year. Yes. Congratulations, by Thank the way. Thank you. I really appreciate the nomination. So thanks to Informer for that. Um, we're a smaller company, so to be in such a prestigious list was really meant a lot. I see a lot of great innovation going on every day, and uh, it's really nice to be recognized as, as a company for that, so thanks. Wonderful. Can you tell me kind of what first inspired you to enter the tech world and AI in particular? Sure. So I think for a lot of us, there was some question that caught our attention as a kid, you know, some big question, where do we go when we die, or why are dinosaurs so cool, something that like inspires our philosophy. And, I remember looking up at a tree as a real small kid on a warm summer day and seeing all the leaves and being like, huh, why am I seeing this? And my cousin's over there and he's seeing something else. Like, why am I me? Why, didn't I, why wasn't I born as him? And what would that mean? And there's billions of people. Everyone's having this experience. And so that was sort of a kicked off interest in consciousness and thoughts and where do these arise from? And so between that and I really loved programming once I got a little bit older. So those two intersections kind of brought me to this field. And I feel really privileged to get to work in it because it's really interesting stuff. Well, let's chat a little bit about your work then at Excelytics. Kind of, uh, what does uh, your kind of uh, AI roadmap look like there? Uh, what kind of projects are you working on currently? Can you tell us a little bit about, about the company? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've been around for about 12 years doing AI, machine learning, NLP, various acronyms over time. Um, but we really just try to use these tools to solve business problems. Um, and what we've seen over the years is that it really comes down to these sort of mundane things about getting a really good pipeline, having a good process, having good tools. And so we build tools to automate and make it as easy as possible to have successful projects. Um, so I feel really lucky to work in a sort of a horizontal company where it's a little bit of everything. It's working with pharmaceutical companies on question answering, it's working with financial companies uh, following regulations, and just a little bit of everything. So uh, we're really focused on how do you solve these problems sort of pragmatically? What is the stuff you need to do to have a successful project. So you're very much then embedded in AI for the enterprise then. Yep. So what would you consider the biggest misconception around AI for business still today? Yeah, so I'd say it's really, it's always been the same two things. It's either people buy into the hype and they're like, yes, this is going to be so easy. It's just, it's going to solve all my problems. Get a couple data scientists, problems gone. It can do everything. And those projects often fall over. And then the other thing you see is people who then just say, you know what, I see the hype, it's, it's I see over promise, I'm gonna, none of that's real, it's all smoke and mirrors, and just sort of turn away from the field, I don't need to worry about it, my business isn't gonna be affected. And I think in the long term that's even more dangerous because um, the hype is gets a little hot sometimes, gets a little ahead of itself, but fundamentally this is changing the world and you're seeing these real incremental steps that are changing business. So one or the other, right? Either too, too big into it or, or not enough. Yeah. And, and but saying that though, there are a few kind of challenges. You must see this when you're working with clients to try and like def define the, the, the best solution, the best, best route to go. And there are those blockers to kind of AI kind of project uh, kind of st stallings, basically. Sure, yeah. Kind of what are those, those challenges that you're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis and how are you navigating them? Yeah, so it's, you have to have foresight and you have to have hit these problems before. And really the biggest challenge is just how many problems you can you know, run into. Um, the AI algorithms are really great at making use of any uh, thing wrong with your data. You know, any little pattern that you didn't intend, you, you sampled incorrectly at some point, and you'll get really promising results that will then burst into flames in production. Um, or you're, you're interacting with an enterprise, you're interacting with humans in this sort of messy real world. Um, with technology, we've always traditionally kind of put it in a box and then gone in and interact with it on its terms. But with AI, you're pulling in data sources. So maybe you're pulling from a CRM system the customer has, and then some other part of the enterprise decides, oh, let, wait, let's change the CRM vendors. And so suddenly the data flowing to your algorithm's gone, and everything's on fire. And how quickly can you find that? And how quickly can you retrain everything, get it up again? Um, so there's a lot of little things that can go wrong, and it's hard to predict what they will be. Um, but if you, you know, build the right tools, if you think about this ahead of time, you can, you know, you can, you can uh, get past it. You can, you can have a strategy to, to have a successful project. Wonderful. And in terms of looking to the future then, mm -hmm. what's going to be shaking up uh, enterprise in terms of AI in the next two to five years? What is going to be on everybody's lips? Like we're going to move past the hype now, this is going to be the next next kind of big thing that's going to shake up uh, sure. AI for the enterprise. So I think text is going to be really big in the coming years. It's where I focus anyway, so maybe it's just my own biased view, but um, we've got all these pre-trained language models now, BERT and ELMO, and they're kind of funny names. But um, what 
I think we've seen in the past with these advancements is the first year, suddenly all the standard data sets, you know, oh, new state of the art, everyone gets excited. But then it's sort of this long tail over the next two to five years where it kind of integrates the enterprise, people start using it on more and more problems, start understanding the nuances of the technology. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot of cool new things you can do with language, whether it's emails or social media or regulations. You know, this text is such a fundamental part of who we are as humans and how we communicate. It's sort of the defining factor of, of humanity. So I think that's an exciting area. Uh, we're going to see a lot of advances. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Paul, for joining us. Oh, certainly. Thanks for having me. Thanks.